Imagine a place that exists in a legal limbo. Imagine a place where human rights conventions do not apply. Imagine a place that has disregard for international law. Imagine a place in a wild abandon in which you pick up people randomly and put in prison and take away their rights. Now what does that compel the heart to say? It compels the heart to question the morality of these individuals that are putting these individuals into prison without upholding these human rights. And for this reason, we propose closing down Guantanamo Bay immediately. So what is the policy that the affirmative of today is going to apply? We will try these, these people and these detainees in a US court, affording them due process and a right to an attorney. If convicted in a civilian court, they are to serve their sentence in a normal prison that does not employ these the methods that are being taken place in Gotarama, that is torture. Moreover, if no credible evidence is found to support against any detainee, he should be repatriated to his own country. And after this, strict measures should be kept on that individual who was a previous detainee. Having realized this, let's look at the stance that the affirmative of today has. We base our stance on three lines. Number one, Guantanamo Bay symbolizes US disregard for human rights and international law. Secondly, terrorists can have you can use Guantanamo to demonize the United States and its ally, allies and hence rally support for their cause. Thirdly, why our policy is practically implementable. Talking about the first issue first, how it shows US disregard for human rights and international law. Now we'll argue this on two levels. Firstly, the effect on the war on terror and secondly, the effect on the individual that is kept in Guantanamo. Now Khalid Sheikh Mohammed was waterboarded 183 times, ladies and gentlemen. What do we see? We see that the act and the acts being taking place in Guantanamo are clearly inhumane and do not respect human dignity. And once we champion these rights, and once we believe that human dignity must always be upheld, we believe Guantanamo contradicts this purpose, this purpose that a democratic state was set up for. Now we realize that the United Nations has released a report saying that it does not only harm these individuals physically, but also mentally. You have sensory deprivation, ladies and gentlemen. You have detention in cages. You have torture and you have sexual abuse. And yet, you propose human rights. Are you a rational society? And are you not contradictory of the purposes that you wish to propagate within your model? And are you upholding the international efforts that have been taken to uphold human dignity from a society where you could hold, where the king could capture a random person from the, from the, from the road and put him in prison? Haven't we evolved from that point? And are we regressing as a society if we have Guantanamo Bay? Yes. Leaving you with that thought, let's look at the effect on the individual. Now, a liberal democratic state, once it shows hypocrisy, shows to the other individuals that it is not consistent with its principle. Now, what does this do? Are you willing to have faith in a government that is such a hypocritical government and does not uphold civil liberties? The effect on the individual is already stated, ladies and gentlemen. It is mentally handicapping that individual and is depriving them of his civil liberties and also his rights. Moving on, talking about how the, the moral leadership and how it is necessary to follow these international laws. Once we believe that a country wishes to champion these rights, it must propagate these ideas not hypocritically but follow them under all common circumstances whether it be considered exceptional or not. Leaving you with that thought, let's talk about how terrorists can demonize the United States and rally support for their cause. Now we understand that mostly we see terrorist organizations being Al-Qaeda and Taliban. Now what is one thing that is common between them? It is their religion, that is Islam. So we see that terrorists already become under, come under commonness that are Muslims. So we see that realizing this, terrorists are able to rally support for their cause. They say, look, you're torturing your Muslim brothers, you have to do something. And this is an emotional appeal, ladies and gentlemen, that propagates more violence and thus does not uphold the principle of a democratic government that is going to protect its own people and there is going to be greater violence. Realizing this, let's look at what Guantanamo does. 
it has a dog ladies and gentlemen carrying the sacred book of an individual that he wishes and he believes is sent by his sacred god something that must be respected under all circumstances once you see that there is a clear disregard for this principle ladies and gentlemen you see people turning against the united states thus not helping its policy talking about why our policy will be practically implemented we have seen that US courts are capable of convicting these people as terrorists and rendered 145 convictions in terror related cases in the past. These convictions in the United States have been proven to be internationally acceptable and we also need to realize that they come under public scrutiny. The war on terror is not fought by a state simply but it needs support of its people to declare the war legitimate. Once you have these civilian courts it comes under public scrutiny and the people are able to keep a check on the government and this we believe is a massive accountability that exists within the model of team affirmative of today and not team negative. Also, we have seen the US defense courts and US courts declaring the military courts as inefficient and corrupt. With these thoughts, what has team affirmative shown to you today? We've shown to you on how the US must regard human dignity under all circumstances. We've shown to you on how by having the Dharma Obey, you're not helping the war effort. And for all these reasons, we're proud to propose. we may have a certain right. entrance. So do you think that if we close down Guantanamo, terrorists are going to stop propagating? No. Do you think that closing Guantanamo might be a victory for the terrorists? No. We believe since the idea is that it would be a victory. If you close down Guantanamo, it would be a victory for the United States of America because it is not only a physical but, war but a war of ideology but the terrorists, and a war of morals as well. But the terrorists who are in the nations that you speak of, the, uh, the Islam nations, right? Do you think they're going to use Guantanamo? Because you said to yourself just previously that they will propagate no matter how. So do you think they can use Guantanamo as a victory? We already see that terrorists have a reason to propagate others against a certain country. Okay. But what you're doing is giving them another reason and one more reason to add fuel to the fire. Okay. Something that team affirmative of today would not help. Thank you. Now you said that under civilian courts, terrorists will be under public scrutiny, right? Yeah. This means that these courts will be public? Yeah. Which means the information will be public. We believe that since even if the information is published, certain checks and measures can still be can still be there to make sure that important intelligence is still retained. Is that a yes? Uh, yes. Okay. Um, you said also that military courts are found to be corrupt. Yeah. Uh, what was your source for this? Uh, we believe that the that the defense of the judiciary defense released a statement saying that even the 91 percent of people were able to convict these people through these civilian courts. No, no, no. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the military. You said that the military courts were corrupt. Yeah. We quoted the, the, the head of the judicial league. So the head of the judicial league of the civilian courts said the military courts were corrupt. Yeah. What was his basis? Because he, I'm pretty sure that one person saying something uh, doesn't make the truth. We believe that since these military courts are being competitive and don't come under public scrutiny, mm -hmm. the idea is that they won't exploit this. But you just told me that there are information that you're going to prevent the public from knowing in a civilian court too, correct? Yeah. So it's not going to be under complete public scrutiny. No, we believe that the intelligence and important intelligence that the government wishes to well, maintain. Why was the military tribunal created in the first place? Wasn't it to hide in important intelligence from t uh, other terrorist groups? But we believe the idea of them being in a civilian court is through the archive tied to a fairer means. Okay. Now, what kind of torture goes on in Guantanamo briefly? Uh, bad torture. Bad torture. <laughs> Do you think bad torture happens in other nations? But we're against that. Is that a yes? Yes. Do you think bad torture happens in nations that terrorists come from? Uh, maybe. Do you think that terrorists, when uh, if you said in your policy that if terrorists are found to be innocent in the U.S. court, that they will be sent back to their own countries, correct? Yes. Thank you.
Ladies and gentlemen, the affirmative came up here today to present you a case of the most horrid and disgusting place on the face of the earth, Guantanamo Bay Prison. They said that, quote, bad torture goes on in Guantanamo Bay Prison today. Today, even after the international community criticized all of the bad things that were occurring in Guantanamo Bay, the United States supposedly didn't do anything to reform the bad things that are occurring in Guantanamo Bay. Today, I stand before you to prove that all of those accusations are false, that we can be transparent about Guantanamo Bay, and the fact that transferring them to U.S. courts where we can supposedly try them is no longer an implementable plan because of the new legislation posed by Congress. Firstly, I'd like to rebuttal their case. The first argument they provide is the fact that it symbolizes the United States' disregard for the human rights and all of the international law treaties they signed. They quote the fact that we torture individuals, the fact that we have terrible and disgusting places. But what's their alternative? Their alternative is to send them to prisons in the United States. Now, we're assuming that these prisons in the United States are going to be high security prisons because obviously the United States, the American people don't want these people to escape. But the conditions in the United States prison are far worse than Guantanamo Bay prison. According to the Washington Post, inmates in Guantanamo Bay, in Guantanamo Bay have free access to a state-of-the-art gym, a number of movies they can watch in the on-site media room, various newspapers and books, and even video games. Inmates at one of America's supermax prisons enjoy no such luxury. Conditions in the U.S. supermax prisons are so horrid, the accused terror suspects in the United Kingdom once appealed to the European Court of Human Rights to prevent their extradition to the U.S. on the grounds that their placement in a supermax would violate their human rights. There is no, there's prolonged, there's pro, no prolonged daylight, no conversations, and none of the, none of the luxuries that are provided for you in Guantanamo Bay prison. So their alternative, their supermax prisons, are far worse than any type of for example, human rights, uh, upholding human rights conditions that we want them to be. And the problem is that we can, especially after the international scrutiny that the United States received, reform Guantanamo Bay, and it has been proven to work. We are continuously making it more transparent, and we are trying to make it a lot better for people uh, that are still being detained here. According to the Washington Post again, the U.S. government has invited three U.N. human rights experts to visit the detention center at Guantanamo Bay Prison. Why would the United States want to do that if all of the abuses that are occurring right now are still occurring? Obviously, we want to be transparent about the things that are occurring right now, yet we still want to be able to say that Guantanamo Bay should be kept open for the detainees that may be dangerous. The second thing he said is that all of the harms of physical and mental health of the individual. Again, the same argument of the fact that there are worse treatment than human than American supermax prisons still apply. Therefore, the second argument is the fact that they could rally support in basically Al Qaeda. But let me remind you that the 9 11 attacks happened before Guantanamo Bay prison. The, U the terrorists have always types of methods of way to rally support. If it wasn't Guantanamo Bay prison, it was the prison camp we had in Afghanistan in Bagram where we tortured two inmates. If it wasn't that prison, it was Abu Ghraib or all of the things we did there. Terrorists are going to use every excuse regardless of what we do because they hate our identity. They hate the Western culture. They don't hate the things we do because we are doing them, but they hate the fact that we exist. The ideology we have is far different from theirs. Regardless of whether we close out Guantanamo, they're going to point at things we've done in the past and things we will do in the future. So they're, they're, that's the argument against the second one. And the third point about the implementability. He's basically arguing the practical aspects of closing Guantanamo in prison down. But again, we already have signed, President Obama has signed in 2012 the National Defense Authorization Act, which basically bars people from Guantanamo Bay prison to be transferred to U.S. soil. Why? Because the American people don't really want these terrorists on U.S. soil anymore. Congress banned the transfer by cutting the funding down for the eventual transfer of these detainees. So what can we do? We can't implement this plan based on practicality. Now moving on to be a negative case. Contention 1. It is not realistic to close down Guantanamo Bay immediately without compromising international security. Several of the past detainees that were released from Guantanamo Bay have gone on to post a great threat to citizens all over the world. This is illustrated by the report released by the Washington Post in which the foiled attempted bombing of the British and American embassies, the aiding of the Nigerian bombing, and the killing of countless numbers of innocent, of innocent people throughout multiple continents were discussed. Further, according to the report, it would be imprudent to release even more detainees when the home country is not practically or militarily equipped to imprison them and would really cost even more and even further lives lost to extremists who target innocent civilians for sport. Defense officials from the United States have, have estimated that at least 95% of the detainees still held in Guantanamo are still connected to Al-Qaeda, the Taliban, or their associates. Guantanamo detainees are among the most dangerous in the world, and we can't simply look past this fact and release them to appease the critics. Another argument to this that the affirmative likes to bring up is the fact that some people that are held there are innocent. We agree to that. 
but we released those four innocent. Recall that we had nearly 500 Guantanamo detainees with the initial start. We released hundreds of them. Now we only have about 200. Why? Because some of them were convicted for their crimes and some of them were released. In fact, in June 29th of this year, we decided to start talking with Kuwait to release two of the prisoners that were wrongly held in Guantanamo Bay prison. We can't still repatriate them to countries when they are innocent, and this is not, not uh, just applicable to the prison side. Our second point is that there are no better alternatives to close up to house Guantanamo Bay uh, detainees immediately. The transfer of Guantanamo Bay to the United States is not a viable option, as I've already alluded to in my rebuttal. For terrorists, the standards prove too difficult to satisfy because key evidence may come from overseas, and processing it in a manner required in a criminal trial may be difficult. And perhaps, most importantly, the use of such evidence in a criminal process may compromise intelligence methods as it requires the disclosures of identities of confidential sources. This risk is exemplified by the 1992 World Trade Center bombing trials in which seemingly innocuous testimony led to compromising some vital intelligence necessary for disrupting Al Qaeda's network. They want to paint a picture that these military tribunals are actually harmful. But again, let me respond to this by saying that they're only quoting the Military Commissions Act of 2006 that was passed, the wrong act that we should have passed. In 2009, a reformed, a reformed act provided was passed. Proper evidence, right to counsel, edited witness testimony, writ of habeas corpus. We already reformed some of the military tribunal procedures we have. There is no reason for closing that one time up. And for these reasons, we strongly need it. Thank you.
Team Negative, ladies and gentlemen, fails to realize why Guantanamo Bay was set up in the first place. The reason why you needed a facility outside of the United States of America was so that you could use these so-called enhanced interrogation techniques on these suspected terrorists. That was why you needed Guantanamo Bay. Because under the laws of the United States of America, you could not use these techniques within the boundaries of the United States of America. So you set up a uh, prison facility outside of the United States. That was the primary reason why you set up Guantanamo Bay in the first place. And which is why Team Affirmative would have you close down Guantanamo Bay, because principally we're against torture. Surprisingly, Team Negative is against torture as well. So if they're against torture, which was the reason why you set up Guantanamo Bay in the first place, why have Guantanamo Bay in the status quo? If you don't want to carry out tor torture, then just shift them back to into prisons inside the United States of America. Why not? That's an interesting question. And the answer proposed by Team uh, Negative was that in Guantanamo Bay, you can watch ISIS 4 while being waterboarded. In Guantanamo Bay, ladies and gentlemen, you can listen to Coldplay's latest sing single while a lady uh, sexually tries to sexually ass uh, assault you, or because you have things such as treadmills, ladies and gentlemen, because you have these luxuries which aren't available in US Supermax prison, luxuries such as waterboarding, luxuries such as, ladies and gentlemen, uh, sleep deprivation, luxuries which are obviously luxuries that only the uh, richest can afford, ladies and gentlemen. That is why they would not have one common way. We think that they have conceded principally uh, that they have given uh, that they uh, agree to us uh, agree with us when we say that torture shouldn't be carried out, and so they have principally conceded the primary reason why Guantanamo Bay should be set up in the first place, and we see no longer see any reason to keep it open. There were other things that were said said by the proposition as well in response to our case. They were that detainee uh, that. You would not have you close down Guantanamo Bay because it, the, this would, closing down Guantanamo Bay would be a victory for terrorists. We think, first, uh, 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 we think, ladies and gentlemen, that in the status quo, this, uh, and this was my first speaker's analysis, that this is a war of values. You need things such as moral leadership. You need things, ladies and gentlemen, because this war was fought in the first place because you had a clash of ideologies. What is the message that you are sending to the general population when your leadership is legitimizing things, inhumane things, such as torture? You are saying that those values for which we fought this war in the first place no longer exist. Values, ladies and gentlemen, that we, in essence, have sacrificed by opening Guantanamo Bay. And we think, Team Affirmative believes that those are values that we need to stand up for. Those are values that we need in this war on because at the end of the day, that was the primary reason why we fought this war in the first place. Things such as moral dignity, things such as human rights, ladies and gentlemen, and the fact that you are willing to carry out, uh, uh, the fact that you are willing to carry out things such as waterboarding on suspected terrorists is morally repugnant and shouldn't be carried out. Another thing, ladies and gentlemen, that was said by Team of uh, Negative of today was that these uh, detainees have gone on to pose a greater threat to people. Our answer to that is, well then, have checks and balances on them once you release them, if that is so, such a big deal for you, uh, if, uh, if that is the reason why you have, want to have gone down way. And another thing uh, that was uh, put forward by Team Negative was that they still connect, 95% of these terrorists are connected, these suspected terrorists are still connected to Al-Qaeda. We think that in the past, you have had the, uh, the large majority of innocent people in Guantanamo has historically been greater than the number of suspected or, uh, or people who you consider guilty under the military tribunals which you uh, under which you have convicted them. Uh, so because that, if there is a greater poss a possibility of innocent people being present in Guantanamo Bay, we would have you shut down Guantanamo Bay. The third thing that was said by them was that the USA is not a better option. Well, then repatriate them back into their own countries. Or on the second level, the, e, uh, the European Union is very keen to have these people in their, uh, uh, in their countries, ladies and gentlemen. Why not send them over to those countries? Why do you need uh, to have Guantanamo Bay present in the first place? So the alternative that was brought forward by Team neg of Negative was that we need to reform Guantanamo Bay. Yes, we do need to reform it. The way to reform it is to shut down torture. 
when you don't have torture, you don't have any reason why you need Guantanamo Bay in the first place, which is why you need more team of
when their sources are from in regards to the torture that's occurring in the status quo, they kind of provide us a date. Therefore, we see that their uh, sources are more outdated in regards to torture that happened in the past, but it's no longer existing. So there's another possible of the reports. Uh, secondly, let's go to the first contention regarding what would be a symbol for U.S. Uh, disregarding for international law. There's five arguments against this. First of all, as David show, uh, has shown, conditions at America facilities are far worse. And secondly, torture abuses no longer occur at one time, but reform and changes have been implemented which we provide with evidence. And three, public perception will always be a secondary concern to national security. Four, as uh, David showed, recidivism of rates show that the dangers of closing it down are uh, to show that the danger of closing it down immediately is another reason why you should negate. And five, repatriation is not immediately feasible. One third, uh, actually, I'll expand on this a little later. And regarding the second contention, regarding uh, the fact that terrorism, uh, that terrorist uses Guantanamo Bay to demonize the United States, one, uh, attacks at 9 11 occurred prior to Guantanamo Bay prison. Therefore, we said these attacks have been consistent and they're not exactly going to stop because we've closed down Guantanamo, so therefore, that impact is not unique. And now we'll move on to the affirmative case. Uh, in regards to our first contention, in which it is not realistic to close down Guantanamo Bay immediately without compromising international security, they said that in the past, large, uh, large majority of innocent people have been detained. But that's in the past. The statistic uh, David brought up was that 95% of detainees still held in Guantanamo Bay in the status quo are still considered, are still connected to Al Qaeda, the Taliban, or the Muslims. <coughs> so despite the past, we've actually repatriated the, uh, the innocent people in the past, but in the status quo, they have nothing to say against the fact that 95% of the detainees still held at Guantanamo are linked to Al Qaeda and uh, other terrorist attacks. Therefore, if we if we release all these detainees, and if we don't do anything about stopping future terrorist attacks, this is actually going to increase terrorism because uh, these organizations see that the U.S. isn't taking the measures necessary to uh, stop future attacks. Now, I have a, another point in regards to the practicality of closing down Guantanamo Bay. Our opponent said that if U.S. conditions are so bad, repatriation could occur to uh, their home countries. However, a repatri uh, repatriating Guantanamo detainees to their home countries is not immediately possible as the resolution uh, requests. Uh, currently, 62% of Guantanamo detainees left are Yemenis nationals. Yemen has long been teetering on the edge of state failure and has proven to be a difficult negotiating partner, rarely presenting consistent uh, positions on repatriation agreements and becoming a radical with respect to detaining issues. Major jail risk deterrence and Wilson's, along with occasional Yemeni government releases of high value Al Qaeda prisoners, has eroded the United States government's confidence in trusting the Yemen government with detainees awaiting trial. Sending detainees back to Yemen is not immediately possible without risking even more terrorist attacks. Therefore, we see that, first of all, conditions in the United States are far worse than they are at Guantanamo Bay. So in terms of human rights, we see that uh, we see that keeping Guantanamo Bay open is a far better alternative than transferring them to U.S. facilities. And secondly, in terms of uh, repatriates, uh, repatriating them to their home countries, we see that that's not immediately possible. The resolution specifies Guantanamo Bay should be closed up immediately, but that's not practical. Uh, that's not practical because obviously their home countries aren't yet stable enough. We don't have enough uh, U.S. troops at, at, at Yemen to make sure that these uh, detainees are being properly released. And uh, therefore, we see that there is no way that we can close up on Hong Bay because uh, A, uh, torture no longer exists, which is proven through evidence as opposed to their logic. And two, it's necessary to stop the 95% of detainees still held at the home who are still connected to Al Qaeda, their uh, the Taliban, or their associates. And three, it's, ne it's a necessary measure that the government needs to take for international security in order to stop further terrorist attacks, in order to, keep, in order to, to detain these um, to detain these terrorists who have proven to be guilty. We need to close down uh, Guantanamo Bay immediately. That's the motion. Therefore, we stopped torture at Guantanamo Bay. The evidence you provided is first 
outdated. Okay, so the provided evidence showing that conditions have okay. changed and that they are being treated humanely. You said you're stopping torture for the reason of gaining evidence and information, but you're not stopping torture as a whole, are you? This resolution isn't asking about torture, it's asking about what harm in prison. And the only argument you had against that, basically, the most important thing you stood out was torture, which we've proven doesn't occur. We don't have to argue about okay. whether or not. If you close down. The resolution specifies what okay. harm if you close, if you have, don't have torture, yes. will Gutamo Bay serve as a normal prison? Yes. It does. And furthermore, okay. it's more secure than a normal prison, and it has more better Okay, okay. Do normal prisons come under a common law or come under the scrutiny of the state? Uh, yes. What? Guantanamo does not. So how can it serve as a normal prison? Actually, not necessarily, because uh, we see that the, mili uh, the, the military commissions there are still necessary in order to try these terrorists, as David showed in his constructive. The fact but is, the prison, the evidence that are necessary. But a prison to needs to come under uh, law, and Guantanamo does not. So yes, it can never serve as a normal prison. Under the military prison. commissions, like in 2009, Obama did implement habeas corpus rights and due process rights to these Guantanamo Bay detainees. You had no evidence to counter the measures that Obama has taken in order to stop these. You said that the conditions in Kotarmo are more enjoyable than normal prisons? Yes. These conditions were so enjoyable that two people died. <laughs> uh, could you state when that happened? Uh, that happened when Kotarmo was built. Uh, could you state the date? Because obviously there's a difference between I don't the remember the date. Yeah. You realize laws can change. And so can conditions at prisons. So you say that laws can change. Once realizing that, you say that certain laws prevent the closure from of Gautama Bay. Why can't these laws that prevent this closure be changed? Sorry, did you clarify? Like you said certain laws yes. prevent the closure of Gautama Bay. No, uh, we basically said that we can't close down Gautama Bay because, because certain prevent... laws prevent no, you no, no, from no. doing so. No, we provided several reasons. One, torture doesn't occur, and two, repatriation back to their home countries isn't realistically feasible. Again, the Yemen situation, the government right there isn't currently uh, stable enough in order to take these. Deep how are you helping the international it. efforts that have been taken against Gautama? No, actually not necessarily. In the card I provided, a uh, Belgium official, police official, uh, validated that the conditions there are actually even better than those at Belgium because it's been validated by the Now, number two, is in, in which 
was is that a creator. Oh no, sorry. Ah, uh, sorry. Okay. So another thing that was not dealt with by T negative was our entire idea about mini tribunals. Now we came out and said that there is no representation for these terrorists, and that there is not sufficient due process, and they do not have paid this court was saying, gentlemen, that most of these mini tribunals are seen as rigged against the defendants, and they do not have the rights that they deserve. Every person, and remember that these people are suspected terrorists, and a lot of them are innocent. There is no reason to torture them, ladies and gentlemen, and to subject them to these conditions if you're not even sure if they have convicted, can, uh, if they have conducted these acts in the first place. Now, lastly, is our policy actually effective? And we strongly believe it is. Let's just go over it. We said that we would try them in a U.S. court and that we would afford them due process and a right to an attorney. If they, and then we also said, if no credible basis is found, then they would be repatriated. Now, they came up and said that most of them are Yemeni. Well, this is actually incorrect because only 30% of them are actually Yemeni. Number two, if Yemen doesn't accept them, then you have countries like Pakistan, you have countries like Iraq, which actually declare these people as missing persons and would readily take them back into Yemen. Then you have countries in the European Union which have also taken taking them back, such as Denmark, and therefore we believe that they can and they can, they can be repatriated when Guantanamo Bay is closed down, as we believe it should be. So today you have a team of a, a team of volunteers that has come up here and told you that Guantanamo Bay is wrong, that it symbolizes a blatant disregard for human rights and a blatant disregard for international law. And we have a team negative that has conceded to our principle that Guantanamo Bay is wrong because of torture. They also came out in their cross-examination and said, well, if there was no torture, it would be just like a normal prison. Well, then why not have normal prisons, ladies and gentlemen? Why have Guantanamo Bay in the first place? That is exactly what we are proposing. And that is why we believe that we have reached a consensus that completely and utterly favors Team Pakistan today. And since we have proved to you that we are principled stands, and, since, and, and they quite frankly agree with us, and since we have proved to you that our policy is effective and that by giving them due process and by repatriating them, you are achieving the goal, and since we have proved to you that there is more harm on the war effort in their world, we so proudly affirm this motion. Number two is the actual idea of, of international scrutiny. 
They say that international scrutiny is, not, that is going to make Guantanamo look bad, and people don't like Guantanamo for that reason. We say the clear opposite. It's actually international scrutiny itself that brought Guantanamo to a prison that does not torture. We actually cited you the evidence of how the UN sent individuals into, into Guantanamo so that we can actually inspect over them. We invited them. Obama invited them. Now, the next point that we want to talk about is the idea of a law that Obama passed that says that we're not allowed to use torture for evidence. Now, they come up here and say a couple things about that. First, that Obama sanctions torture. Now, apparently, the United States is the champion of human rights, according to the third former speaker, but suddenly the leader of the champion of human rights is sanctioning torture. I strongly disagree. This has not happened, and I can assure you that. Obama does not sanction torture because of the very, I can assure you, that he passed the law. Why would a man who decided that you're not allowed to use torture as evidence suddenly decide that you're allowed to use torture in general? We have clearly shown you evidence that this has been passed, and now the next thing that they say about torture is the fact that, well, they can use it as evidence, or they can use it to gain intelligence, as Guantanamo should be. And then that, we can see that they can see that Guantanamo can be used for military intelligence. But, we have shown you that torture, according to them, is not just bad and inhumane and morally impugnant, but it's ineffective. They have not refuted against our point that torture has been proven to be ineffective, as we have shown you in our science and arts, and clearly we can show you that because the United States has learned from that, there is no reason for us to torture, and we have fixed that problem. And finally, is the idea of the historical fallacy. They say that it has happened in the, fa in the past, so logically it should be happening right now. That is not true. Guantanamo, just because it was uh, bad in the, uh, in the Bush administration, who is not necessarily the, uh, the smartest man on the planet, it does not necessarily mean that currently Guantanamo is going to be that same condition. And for those reasons, we have clearly proven you that the one burden that they propose on us, that Guantanamo is using torture, is only a thing of the past and an imagination. Now let's move on to the last voters issue, which is the idea of possibility, of feasibility. Now they say a couple things about that. First, that we can, uh, we can send them to different places like US prisons, and then they came up here and brought a new point about how we can send them to European countries, Pakistan, which I can't address right now because it's the third speech and I'm not allowed to break new reputations. But what they did say is that the first, uh, in their first affirmative, they said that we can send them to US prisons. Number one, we have clearly shown you that U.S. prisons are far worse than Guantanamo Bay. We are ashamed to admit that, but it's reality. And if they actually want good conditions for Guantanamo, then so be it. The next thing that they said is that it's going to cause hatred for the United States. Why are you terrorists hate the United States? It's not because of Guantanamo Bay prison. It's because they're terrorists. They admitted that. It's their ideology. Just because we closed down Guantanamo does not mean the terrorists are starting to be like, okay, the United States is a better place now. They're still going to hate on the United States. In fact, they might even use Guantanamo as a reason for why the United States is clearly weak. That's a victory for the terrorists. And finally, they have said nothing against our National Defense Authorization Act. All these type of things already said in Congress that clearly prevents it from actually being passed immediately or closed down immediately, which is something that has not been addressed by the affirmative. So because of these reasons, because we have provided you clear logic, unlike their logic based on paranoia and suspicion, we strongly urge you to vote in favor of the native. Thank you.